Hello there. Hannah here coming to you during this full moon portal to communicate my appreciation for the outpouring of love and support that so many of you shared on my post last week, communicating and proclaiming my new brand identity as the Embodied Enchantress and hinting at some of the offerings soon to come in this next cycle. So in this video today, I'm going to share a little bit more about where I've been hiding over the past several years that I've been more or less silent on social media. Some of the experiences that I've had and the insights that those experiences have offered on a really, really deep integrated level. I'm also going to speak a little bit more about my transition from Temple Gaia to Enchanted Arrows and what I see as the potential trajectory for my work in this coming cycle. So it is going to be a little bit of a longer video today. I hope that you'll stick with me towards the end since I'll be sharing a bit about some upcoming offerings. <sighs> So let's dive in. While in the thick of COVID, as many of you might know, I began deeply questioning the value of the sacred sexuality work that I was doing, particularly in the face of such a universal crisis. I was wondering whether that work was contributing in any meaningful way or whether it was simply perpetuating old cycles of commodifying feminine sexuality and using my own sexuality to benefit other people even more than I was enjoying it myself. So I started asking myself, what are my true gifts and how can I bring them through in a way that meets a need that is widespread and deeply relevant to these particular times while still feeling aligned with my soul essence and how I operate and want to show up in the world. So at the same time that I was having this internal questioning and this crisis, I lost my home base and practice space when the dear friend that I was living with at the time decided to sell her home and buy land for, to start a farm way out from town. And as much of a blessing as that land really did turn out to be, at the time it just didn't feel like there was any place for me there. And so I started wondering, I was just so deeply questioning who I am, where I belong, and what I have to bring to the table. I didn't speak about this much at the time, but that actually spun into a questioning of whether I actually even wanted to continue to fight to carve out a place for myself in this world. So in January of 2021, as I was in the thick of this inquiry, the day after the rush on Congress, my stepfather, Bob, came down with a really bad case of COVID and had to be hospitalized. A few days later, my mom got really sick too. So I dropped everything. I packed up my car with all the herbal remedies that I had in my arsenal and drove up to Virginia to nurse my mom through her infection. At that time, we knew very little about COVID and we were treating it like the plague. 
So the experience of stepping into my mother's home and exposing myself to possible infection was a real life application of everything I'd been learning and practicing around spirituality, around holistic health and well-being, around herbal medicine, and the balance of spiritual discipline with grace, profound grace, and just trust in myself, in my body, and in the mystery. Through that experience, I learned profound lessons on the importance of community and relationships as the most valuable currency and healing remedy, which can sometimes make the difference between life and death. I dedicated myself to the mystery school of nursing my mom back to health while simultaneously my stepfather was isolated in the hospital and ultimately succumbed to malpractice and died. That was just over three years ago. In the wake of that heartbreak, the next chapter of my journey became about helping my mom get through her grief process and recovery and helping her clear out her home, managing Bob's estate and preparing for her eventual return to her birthplace in the UK. All the while, I was processing the anger and the frustration that I had around what I perceived as the juxtaposition between my mom's experience of healing through connection and holistic herbal medicine as compared to my stepfather's experience of isolation trapped in a medical system that does not value natural medicine or understand the importance of connection as a factor in health. So as a part of my own healing process, I began to write about that whole experience. But because of the divisiveness of social media, I didn't feel it was a story that I could share here it was just too precious and too tender. And I just, I felt protective of my process. And it didn't seem like this was a platform where I could share about my authentic experience and the emotions that I was processing as a result of those experiences. So instead, I wrote for myself and pulled back from social media. In time, I transformed that story into a fantastical tale, which a year later was published in The Selkie's Tale, which is a compendium of real to life fairy tales published in 2022. I'll pop a link in the comments below so that you can buy your own copy if you feel inspired. And later on this year, I intend to release an audio recording of the unabridged of the unabridged version of my own story titled The Belly of the Beast. While crafting that story, I found the answers to many of the questions with which I was struggling. I came to a deeper awareness of who I am at my core and what my vision is for my future, for the mark that I want to leave in the world. I share about that vision in the story and I'll reveal more about it in the time ahead. Through this process, I began to relate to myself as a Tantrika and a Dakini on a whole new level. And I realized that although sexuality and sensuality and authentic embodied expression 
are indeed paramount to living a fully actualized life, I believe. The true power of these archetypes is rooted in their capacity to celebrate life and death and to hold multiple realities all at once simultaneously as equally valid and sacred. Tapping into this has helped me develop an even more profound trust in the mystery while anchoring myself to the earth and listening deeply to my body's wisdom, aligning my intuition and showing up through right action, following that deep inner guidance, one step at a time, moment by moment. I came to realize that I am a good witch. I am a good witch. And my gifts are best directed towards connecting with others who are mystics and magical beings who never felt that they quite fit into the mold of family and society. And to help them tap in with the essence of enchantment and the resilience that connection with spirit, nature, and the unseen realms can bring. I realized that while I do this in my private work with clients, I want to be able to reach more people. And at the same time, I started to ask the question, why is it that some people who experience tragedy and trauma in their lives have the capacity to learn and grow and thrive through those challenges, while others seem to spiral and get lost in despair. So I began to pay more attention to people's stories when they would share about their lives. And I realized that an essential element in the experience of those who have been able to grow and thrive through challenges as compared to those who are consumed by them and often lies in the connection that a person feels to something greater something beyond themselves, be that spirit, nature, or community. The key seems to be that belief that on some level, there are forces operating beyond what we can know and that experiences arise to teach us and support our growth in profound, unexpected ways. Now, this is not to bypass trauma, terror, grief, destruction, those things that are a part of this life. I know that there are extreme circumstances that challenge this idea, like what we're seeing happening in the Middle East, the plight of the indigenous and people of color here in the Americas, and situations of extreme violence and abuse. In fact, facing the depths of that suffering and allowing ourselves to fully feel the pain of it all and to be witnessed in that if needed, met in that place of darkness by others who can hold us in the spirit of total acceptance without trying to fix us or make it better or problem solve. That is exactly what gives us the resilience to move through life's challenges and harvest the gifts from any experience in due time. Contrary to what a lot of spiritualists may believe, we cannot simply focus on the positive. True magic comes from our capacity to lean in to the negative and embrace it as a rich part of this human experience, as something that gives this life dimension and gives us something to push up against 
for our growth. This is a foundational tantric principle that has been driven home for me on the deepest levels over and over and over again through this experience and others that I intend to share about in time. And this is why our personal narratives are so important. In particular, the version of the stories we tell ourselves and others that we relate to as a foundation for our personal identity. When I first moved to Asheville almost 12 years ago after getting kicked out of the yoga retreat center where I was living and working after college, and that's a story that I'll share at another time, one of the first steps on my healing journey was to join a program led by an elder in our community named Meta Commerce. The program was called Story Medicine and it impacted me so much that I later wrote an article about the importance for, of story for somatic healing, which I'll also link in the comments below. Through the experience of writing The Belly of the Beast and applying the principles of story medicine, which are rooted in West African traditional indigenous wisdom around the importance of storytelling as part of our individual and collective healing, I've begun to turn my focus towards my gift and passion for story. I'll share more about how that journey has unfolded at another time, but suffice it to say, I've come to really truly value the importance of enchantment, of mythos, and of reclaiming our personal and collective narratives as a pathway for healing, wisdom, and growth. I've also come to see fantasy and imagination as an important element that gives meaning, pleasure, and enjoyment to this human experience as a gateway to another realm where our divine selves can feel safe to play until such a time as we can anchor those realms into this reality. So, this is the direction that I see my work in the world taking in these coming cycles and why I've chosen to rebrand my business transitioning from Temple Gaia to Enchanted Eros. And soon I'll be birthing a whole new branch of my business focused around my love of beauty and creation, which I'm calling Enchanted Life Designs. While I am continuing to offer personal guidance for individuals and couples, and even partnering with some fantastic other practitioners in that process, the focus of my work is shifting from one-off experiences towards extended programs for clients who want to go really deep into the realms of conscious relating, intuitive spirituality, holistic healing, and sacred sexuality. I'm envisioning also curating truly fantastical events that weave whimsy and eroticism. And I'm opening up the field to offer practitioner mentorships for those wanting to tap in to their own gifts as spiritual guides and sacred intimate practitioners so that the lineage I carry from my dearly departed Tantra teacher, Denise, can continue to live on. My hope is that in shifting my career focus toward working in depth with a small number of clients, I'll free up space to focus more on creative endeavors so I can share those practices and wisdom teachings more widely using the art of visual, audio, and literary storytelling as a medium to reach more people. I'll be revisiting the Enter the Temple film project that was begun 
prior to COVID. And I'll be sharing more of my stories along with sacred sexual erotica and mythical retellings. I am playing with the idea of starting a Substack as a platform to house that content. So if you have any experience with that platform, please hop into the links, um, hop into the comments below and let me know about your experience. I'd really, really love to hear if you think that that's the right place for me to be putting these, um, these recordings, these videos and other articles and stories that I'll be writing. So my intention is that the tools perspectives and practices that have helped me and others not only survive but thrive through adversity can become part of our collective narrative, interwoven with the tapestry of our collective consciousness on the planet in a way that will help bring greater harmony by balancing the narrative of polarity that's being spun in the, in the larger, wider arena, thus using the tumultuousness of these times as an alchemical container for our individual and collective transformation and growth. To jumpstart this process, I'll be offering a week-long course over the spring equinox, exploring the primary pathways of embodiment that form the basis for any Tantra practice and applying those techniques in a transformational ritual during the next full moon. This offering is for individuals as well as for lovers. It's really focusing on our personal process and intentions. So stay tuned and keep an eye out for information about Inner Alchemies, the five pathways of embodied transformation coming soon. If you are feeling inspired by the story I've shared, by the vision that I've offered, um, and feel called to take action to support me in this process, there are some things that you can absolutely do. Most importantly, you can help me be seen and help others find me Help me get noticed in a way that will differentiate me from other practitioners in this field. So you can go to Google, search Tantra Asheville, Sacred Intimacy or Intimacy Coaching and find my Enchanted Arrows site. Click on my site and spend a little time poking around. This will let the search engines know that my site is valid and valuable and will help it become more visible. You can also leave reviews on my business Facebook page and my Google listing. Whether you've worked with me individually or just know me personally or simply are acquainted with me peripherally, you can speak to how knowing me has positively impacted your world, things you've discovered about yourself through knowing me. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and my email list to stay apprised of all my offerings, to-dos, and grand plans. Because those of you who know me know that I am a font of inspiration and that my creative capacity knows no end. So there's bound to be some beautiful things coming through. So thank you for your attention here, beloveds. If you have stuck with me this far, I'd love to hear in the comments below about some of the challenges you faced over this past cycle and what you found to be the key in helping you transform that lead into gold. I want to hear your stories as well as share my own. So shine on bright spirits. Much love and bye for now.